ancient ancestors were shaped by a lifetime of stabbing giant beasts to death, dismembering their carcasses and carrying the meat many miles up to their mountaintop caves. Humans are truly freaks of nature. From our massive brains to the robust skulls that hold them, we have many unusual features that are not normal. The skeletal remains of ancient humans, such as Homo erectus, Neanderthals and early Homo sapiens, reveal striking features, robust neck muscle attachments and pronounced brow ridges. These traits, particularly evident in fossils like those Java man, suggest adaptations to physically demanding lifestyles. Java man exhibits a thick occipital torus and rugged nuchal plane, suggesting exceptional neck strength. So why did our ancestors have such massive brow ridges? Anthropologist Grover Krantz famously wore a Homo erectus brow ridge around for six months to see what it was like, but didn't come to any compelling conclusions. A key driver of these morphological characteristics is high testosterone levels, which influence muscle development, bone growth, and cranial structure. The neck's robusticity, beyond stabilizing the head, may have supported heavy cranial structures as ancient human skulls were often thicker and heavier than those of modern humans. The neck of ancient humans was a critical anatomical region supporting the head during violent and forceful activities. Fossil evidence, particularly from Homo erectus and Neanderthals, shows robust occipital bones with pronounced nuchal crests and deep muscle attachment scars. These features indicate powerful neck muscles, including the trapezius, which anchored to the occipital and temporal bones. The Cabway skull was found in cave deposits that were being quarried away during metal ore mining in what is now Zambia, then the British colony of northern Rhodesia. It's one of the most beautifully preserved of all human fossils. The skull suggests an extremely robust individual with the comparatively largest brow ridges of any known hominin. The skull resembles in an extraordinary degree the skulls of the Neanderthal man of our old European Paleolithic, but has an even more brutish aspect. The biomechanical demands of ancient human lifestyles explain this robustness. Early hominins engaged in activities like hunting large game, fighting off predators, carrying heavy loads, and possibly intergroup combat. These tasks required the neck to stabilize the head against rotational and compressive forces. For instance, wrestling giant beasts to the ground or thrusting a spear would generate significant torque, necessitating strong neck muscles to prevent injury. The nuchal crest, a bony ridge at the back of the skull, provided a larger surface area for muscle attachment, enhancing leverage and force production. Comparative studies of Neanderthal skulls, such as those from La Chapelle au Saint, show similar features with nuchal areas far more developed than in modern humans, reflecting adaptation to a rugged environment. The brow ridge, or supraorbital torus, is another hallmark of ancient human skulls, particularly in Homo erectus and Neanderthals. In Java man, the brow ridge is exceptionally thick and projecting, forming a continuous bar above the orbits. This feature likely served multiple functions, with a primary role as a biomechanical counter to stresses imposed by both jaw and neck muscles. The frontal bone, where the brow ridge sits, experiences compressive forces during activities like chewing or head movement. A robust brow ridge would distribute these forces, preventing cranial deformation. The interplay between the neck and brow ridge is critical. Powerful neck muscles, anchored at the occiput, transmit forces through the skull during dynamic movements. These forces could stress the frontal bone, especially in species with large, heavy skulls like Homo erectus. The brow ridge's thickness and projection likely acted as a structural buttress, reinforcing the frontal region against such stresses. Fossil evidence supports this. Homo erectus skulls show both massive brow ridges and robust nuchal attachments suggesting co-evolution of these features to handle biomechanical demands. Beyond neck-related forces, the brow ridge also countered stresses from jaw muscles. The muscles used in chewing tough foods attached to the skull and jaw, generating significant force. The brow ridge's role in stabilizing the skull during chewing likely complemented its function in resisting neck muscle stresses, making it a multifunctional adaptation. 
High testosterone levels are a plausible driver of the robust neck and brow ridge morphology in ancient humans. Testosterone, a steroid hormone, profoundly influences musculoskeletal development, particularly in males, though females also produce it in smaller amounts. In ancient humans, elevated testosterone would have enhanced muscle mass, bone density, and cranial robusticity, shaping the pronounced features seen in fossils. Testosterone promotes muscle hypertrophy by increasing protein synthesis and muscle fiber growth. In ancient humans, high testosterone likely amplified the size and strength of neck muscles, as evidenced by the deep attachment scars on fossils like Neanderthal man. The trapezius muscles, critical for head stabilization, would have been particularly affected. Larger muscles exert greater force on their bony attachments, necessitating thicker, stronger bones to withstand the stress. The robust nuchal crests in Homo erectus and Neanderthals reflect this adaptation, with testosterone-driven muscle growth selecting for enhanced occipital morphology. Testosterone also stimulates osteoblast activity, increasing bone deposition and density. In the skull, this manifests as thicker, more robust cranial bones, including the brow ridge and occipital region. Studies on modern humans show that testosterone influences craniofacial morphology, with higher levels correlating with more pronounced brow ridges and jaw lines, particularly in males. In ancient humans, this effect was likely amplified due to higher baseline testosterone levels driven by evolutionary pressures like competition for mates, hunting and survival in harsh environments. The brow ridges development is particularly tied to testosterone. In primates, including humans, the supraorbital region is sensitive to androgenic hormones, which promote bone growth during puberty and adulthood. Java man's massive brow ridges, seen in specimens like Sangiran 17, suggest sustained testosterone exposure, possibly linked to a lifestyle requiring physical dominance or endurance. Similarly, Neanderthal skulls show thick brow ridges consistent with high testosterone levels in a species adapted to cold climates and intense physicality. Testosterone-driven features like the brow ridge and robust neck may have also served as social signals. In many primates, pronounced craniofacial traits are sexually dimorphic, with males exhibiting larger brow ridges and muscle attachments due to higher testosterone. In ancient humans, these features could have signaled strength, aggression, or genetic fitness, aiding in mate attraction or intragroup competition. Java man's exaggerated brow ridges, for instance, may have visually communicated physical prowess, complementing the functional role of cranial reinforcement. The neck and brow ridge morphology of ancient humans reflects adaptation to a physically demanding niche. Homo erectus, including Java man, lived in diverse environments, from African savannas to Southeast Asian jungles. Their lifestyle involved persistence hunting, tool use, and possibly confrontations with predators or rivals. Neanderthals faced similar demands, compounded by cold climates and reliance on large game. High testosterone levels would have been advantageous, enhancing muscle strength, bone robusticity, and competitive behaviors. Fossil comparisons highlight these adaptations. Jokudi and Homo erectus from China show similar, though less extreme, brow ridge and neck attachment size compared to Java man, suggesting regional variation in physical demands or testosterone expression. Neanderthals, with their stocky builds and heavy skulls, exhibit even more pronounced features, likely reflecting intense selection for strength in harsh conditions. Jokudian woman lived 500,000 years ago in China, and she was not beautiful by our standards. The facial reconstruction required giving her a much thicker neck than any modern woman. Both the back of the skull and the powerful chinless jaw revealed muscle attachments that made such a neck unmistakable. Similarly, the cheeks had to be shaped to fit the muscle mass required to operate that heavy jaw. Brow ridges were extremely prominent on the species, including their women. The most notable feature is the skull's low, flat arch. The arch of this skull top from front to back provides compelling evidence. It is the flattest and most gorilla-like of any known human skull, even flatter than one of the two skulls from Java, though the forehead is slightly higher. A sharp notch between the forehead and the thick ridge of the beetling brows is also gorilla-like. This feature is much more prominent in Homo erectus skulls. 
The position of the opening through which the spinal cord passes is an intermediate feature between apes and modern humans. In apes, this is located at the back of the skull and points outward. In modern humans, it is located well below the base of the skull and points upward. This opening can be seen from the back of Jokudian man just below the base of the skull. The brain inside that unusually shaped skull was quite small, but still within the human size range. Its average volume was 1,000 cubic centimeters, as measured by the water displacement method. The largest Homo erectus skull ever collected has a capacity of 1,220 cubic centimeters, far inferior to the modern European average of 1,350 cubic centimeters. Several of the nine skulls collected thus far have been intact enough to allow brain casts to be made within their skull cases, allowing us to determine the size, shape, and total volume of the brain. It is a small and flat brain with several structures that closely resemble those found in the brains of apes. Jaws and teeth, as well as skull and brain, provide evidence for their primitiveness. Apes have jaws with teeth arranged in a narrow horseshoe arch, and this ancient Chinese human has jaws that are less human and more ape-like. The canine teeth, while not as fang-like as those seen in gorillas, were noticeably larger and much longer rooted than the corresponding teeth in our own jaw. Nevertheless, there is evidence of rudimentary speech. The vertebral canal of Erectus does not appear to have developed sufficiently to provide him with the breathing control required for complex speech, but he may have been the first hominid to use a proto-language based on evidence from the cervical vertebrae. Although there is no archaeological evidence, its well-developed brain and physical capabilities indicate that it may have used symbolic thought. A quantum leap in cognition and technology occurred approximately 800,000 years ago, and all of the characteristics that define modern humans were first developed in Homo erectus. The robust neck and brow ridge of ancient humans, exemplified by Java man, were intricately linked adaptations to a physically demanding existence. The neck's powerful muscles, anchored to a robust occipital region, stabilized the head during intense activities, while the brow ridge countered the resulting stresses, reinforcing the frontal bone. High testosterone levels drove these features, enhancing muscle mass, bone density, and cranial robusticity, with possible social signaling benefits. Fossil evidence from Homo erectus and Neanderthals underscores this interplay, reflecting evolutionary pressures for strength and survival. These traits, though diminished in modern humans, highlight the remarkable adaptability of our ancestors, shaped by the potent influence of testosterone in a world of raw physicality. While the biomechanical and testosterone-driven explanations are compelling, the brow ridge and neck morphology may have had additional roles. The brow ridge could have protected the eyes from impacts or debris, a practical advantage during hunting or combat. Its prominence may also have enhanced facial expressions, aiding social communication. In modern Homo sapiens, reduced testosterone levels and less demanding lifestyles have led to diminished brow ridges and neck muscle attachments. Indeed, our ancestors would wonder how we survive given our weak necks and flat, punchable faces.